And blessed uh, morning po sa lahat. Uh, uh, we're so happy that uh, everybody are, most of us are here and uh, we see some uh, people, mga bagong balik. <laughs> mga bagong balik ba? <laughs> I, I will not say <laughs> bago, but bagong balik. Mga bagong balik. Welcome back, brother. Uh, Ferdi and Sister Michelle, and uh, and I, at Abelina, and uh, everybody else, we welcome you back to Christ is Our Rock Ministries International. My improvement, wala akong microphone yun, so. Yeah, uh, before I start, uh, kailangan kong pahabain ulit to para mahaba-haba. Yeah, yeah. magkwentuhan muli tayo, no? magkwentuhan tayo. Uh, uh, some of them, I'm, I will say sorry, uh, <laughs> Brother Trevor. I'll speak a little bit of Tagalog later. And I'll, I'll ask uh, Sister Melita to explain it to you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Brother Taman as well. Sorry, I'll ask Sister Tess to explain to you some of the bits later. Yeah. I'll try to explain a little bit of the English side. Yeah. But, okay, help me. Uh, let's all pray first. And yes, Lord God, thank you once more for this wonderful day that you have given to us. Thank you for this uh, wonderful sunshine, Lord God, although we know, pa, Lord God, that it's a little bit too hot for some, but it's a good for some, of Lord God, and we know that we, we cannot win sometimes, but with your help, Lord Jesus, we know everything is working according to your will, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord God, and may you please bless us tonight, today, Lord, as we continue to uh, honor you, Praise you and worship you, and as we continue to study more of your words, Lord God, that we'll, we will be able to use it in our daily lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, and as for me, Lord, uh, continue to bless me as well as I'm going to be your mouthpiece, Lord God. Use me as your mouthpiece, Lord God, that everything that will come out of my mouth are being blessed by you, Lord God. Anoint these words, Lord, and cleanse it, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray. Amen, Lord God. Yes, just like I said, uh, let's make this a bit longer. Yeah, this is, a, <clears throat> I'll tell you a bit of a story. This is a story of a man who wants to become a minister. So there is an interview. And the uh, bishop said, okay, can you tell me about the story of the Good Samaritan? All right, yeah? No, the Good Samaritan. Okay, bishop, he said. I'll read this one so I won't mess up. Once there was this man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell from among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked him. And as he went on, he didn't have money, and he met the queen of Sheba. She gave him 1,000 talents of gold and 100 change of raiment. And he got into the chariot and drove furiously. And when he was driving under a big juniper tree, his hair caught up on a limb of that tree. And he hung there many days and many nights. And the ravens brought him food to eat and water to drink, and he ate 5,000 loaves of bread and two fishes. One night, when he was hanging there asleep, his wife Delilah came along and cut off his hair. And he dropped and fell on a stony ground, but he got up and went on. And it began to rain, and it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And he did himself a cave, and he hid himself in a cave, and he lived on a locust and wild honey. Then he went on till he met a servant who said, Come, take supper at my house. And he made an excuse and said, no, I will not. I have married a wife and I cannot go. And, his, and the servant went out in the highways and in the hedges and compelled him to come in. After supper, he went on and came on down to Jericho. And when he got there, he looked up and he saw old Queen Jezebel sitting down way up high in the window. She laughed at him. Then he said, throw her down. Then they throw her down. Then he said, throw her down again. They throw her down 70 times 7. And on the fragments that remain, they pick up 12 baskets full, besides women and children. And they said, 
Blessed are the peacemakers, that's P-I-E-C-E, -E, peacemakers. Now, whose wife do you think she will be in the judgment day? What do you think of the story? It is a messy, messed up story of the Good Samaritan. If you know your scripture, you would have got the message. You have got the gist of it. And if you don't really know the Bible story, I think you are messing a lot of things. Mess up. You don't know most of the story of the Bible. I'm sorry, but uh, let's, let's go on. Yeah. And uh, today, uh, we know that there is a lot of fake news, just like what I've said. It's, some of them are true. Uh, all of them are true anyway. But it's bits and pieces of the Bible where they put there together, but it's not going to work as one story. It looks like a story, but it's a messed up story. It's a mix of fragments of the Bible. So right now, my brothers and sisters, some of the churches uses the same thing, uses the same method. They put parts and pieces of the Bible, and they put them together to deceive people. That's what... Uh, that's what's happening right now, my brothers and sisters. And you know, most of them are on social media, sometimes on the TV, sometimes on the news. And sometimes we know, we know, do you know about the Marites, yeah? You know who Marites is? I'll speak Tagalog, I'll speak Tagalog, and I'll, I'm sure brother, uh, Sister Milita and Sister Tess will explain to Brother Taman and sis Brother Teber. And Chismis, the gossip, I know you know this one yesterday. Ang chismis ginawa ni Marites. Kinalat ni Marisol. Diba? So kasi si Marisol, Sol, Sol. At pinaniwalaan ni Sally. Itong si Sally, sumali. At nakisali. At kunento naman kay Eva. Ngayon, iba-iba na ang kwento. So, <laughs> that's some of the mess up story, my brothers and sisters. And some of them are chismis only. And please don't believe them. And right just like I said, some so-called ministers are using the Bible to deceive a lot of people. Yeah. Because they said they are showing the Bible, they thought all of the listeners are thinking that it's true. We need to be very careful of anything that we hear, anything that we listen to, especially if it involves ourselves, our families, our loved ones. It been, especially if it involves your salvation. And... These past few weeks, my brothers and sisters, we have learned that we are the light of the world. Amen? Amen. We are the light of the world. And as a light of the world, we need to have a pure in heart. Our heart should be pure. And with purity comes God's power. And with God's power, he gave us a church. And the church is a family. Amen? And as a family, we should all know the truth. There it is. Go back a little bit. We should know the truth. And as a family, we should know the truth. Amen? Amen. So right now, we should know the truth. Why do, should we know the truth? We've learned this a lot before, my brothers and sisters. If you know the truth, just like if you know the characteristic of gold, you know, every... Uh, the one who's uh, buying the gold, goldsmiths or something like that, I don't know. The one who knows the gold, what they are learning is what are the characteristics of gold. Because if you know the gold, no matter what the fake, fake makers will do, you will know if it's fake. Amen? Amen. That's why we should know the truth. And Jesus warned us about these false prophets. In Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 20, Jesus said, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. Recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or pigs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree does not 
Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Thus, the, their fruit, you will recognize them. So my brothers and sisters, just like, you know, the saying, do not judge the book by its cover. Just do not judge a people by its clothing. Because, you know, they might be showing that they are good from the outside, but they're inside, their intentions when they come to church. And the, or the pastors or the so-called preachers, they, they will say, it looks like they're saying the truth, just like what I said. They're reading from the Bible, but their intentions are wrong. Some of them are just, just like the big churches. The big churches, you know. Just like, uh, what are their characteristics of this sheep-like? Sheep-like, because they are just wearing sheep clothing, but they are wearing uh, just, they are just uh, ferocious wolves. In Galatians 5, uh, 19 to 21, these are this, we know this one. This is the opposite of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is the exact opposite. These are the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, you know, some of the people come to church, but they are hiding something. Some of them are watching pornography. You know that Jesus warned us about this. You know, this pornography, it just pops out in your phones, even if you don't like it. This is what the devil is using right now. Social medias, they are everywhere. You know, the TikToks, especially. You can see these ladies already almost wearing nothing. It's starting to, just to, just to have some viewers. Yeah? These are the kinds of the devil is using right now. And even the big churches, I've, we've watched a uh, documentary about one big church because of their scandal. One of their leaders are, uh, have been uh, doing some bad things and uh, behind the curtains. So they have been investigated and uh, investigation have been going and uh, that leader is somehow been uh, demoted according to them. But behind it, it's, you know, it's big churches. They are covering things up for for their big churches. And uh, I've also, uh, it's not uh, been a, a secret to you that I was watching this uh, uh, very good uh, preacher before. His name is was Rabbi Sacharias. He already passed away. But after he passed away, there have been some uh, uh, reports that he's got an extra marital affair or extra uh, beside him, uh, beside his wife. He's got another partner, which is he was hiding. He was a, he was a very good preacher, but behind Behind everything, there is something behind it. So, my brothers and sisters, be very careful. Be very careful with this one. There are a lot of people who are saying that they are a messenger of God. This is, like I said, pastors, leaders from different faith. <clears throat> they say they are the followers of Christ. They have a different motives in going to church or building a church, actually. Some of them are building churches for money, power controlling things like that. And uh, some of them are just the normal churchgoers. They come to church and they look like Christians, well-mannered, behave. But when they go out of church, you will see their true colors. Not even, sometimes we say that they are Sunday worshipers. But Sometimes you just don't say Sunday worshipers because there's just certain time on the Sunday that they are a worshiper. So hourly, hourly Christians or hourly worshipers because it's only from, what, 10.30 till 1 that they are Christians or 10.30 till 2 that they are Christians and then they'll come out, not even the whole Sunday that they are Christians. And when they go out, they are a different people. So be very careful with this one. And some of them, they come to church. I remember this one before that 
you know, when one of the churches, uh, they went to become a leader because they don't have anything to do. They went to become a leader of the church because they have nothing else to do. But their motives are different. Be very careful this, with this one. Yeah. Uh, Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians on uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 to 15, it says, does the not, that does not surprise us because even Satan changes himself to look like an angel of light. He, he's, he can be an angel of light, look like, but he is not. So it does not surprise us if Satan's servants make themselves look like servants who work for what is right. But in the end, those people will get the punishment they deserve. See, my brothers and sisters, Satan is penetrating churches. He does not go to the pub. He does not go to those pubs or uh, discos because he knows that those people who go there is already his own. He owns them people. Those are his children already. But where does he go? He penetrates the churches because he knows those people who go to churches are not still his children. Yeah? Amen? Amen. So be very careful, my brothers and sisters. Matthew 7, 21, 23 says, We know that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, will do, Lord, Lord, did we do not prophesy in your name and in, the, in your name drive out demons and in your name performs many, perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. My brothers and sisters, I remember in the uh, Philippines, you know, those uh, statues, those statues who, are, who have bleeding hearts, they said, according to according to what we have heard. Those are the things that the devil is using. He can also perform miracles to deceive people, you know, my brothers and sisters. And uh, not only those bleeding, uh, bleeding hearts of uh, statues, dancing sun, uh, talking statues, a little bit like that. And, uh, I know what you are saying. But uh, behind them, they are just very good puppets. Those are in the Philippines. I also experienced that before. Even on, uh, where I went to school before, I went to school, they said that the water is a healing water behind the church where I used to go as a school. But above that, there is a house there throwing some things in the, in the, in the lake. So I don't know if they, if the, Water is really healing, but the devil can make it like it's working, but it's the devil who is doing it. Amen? Yeah, see me, brothers and sisters. Uh, last time, last Sunday, we have learned that not all people, not all creation are children of God, just like what Sister Annie said. Everything is created by God, but only those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, those who are really born again, really born again, and become a new creation are the ones that are so called, are called children of God. John 1, 9, John chapter 1, 9 to 13, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. So we know, my brothers and sisters, that they are really children of God. Amen? Are you one of them? <laughs> Are you one of them? Are you one of the children of God? Have you, have you already 
accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Amen. And you know, my brothers and sisters, that they are also a children of the devil. Yeah? Amen? We know that in John 8, 42 to 44, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would have loved me. For I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because, because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, and for the truth is not, is no tr for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. He is a father of lies. So we know, my brothers and sisters, that there are children of the devil, just as well as children of God. Are you happy or are you blessed that you are a part of the children of God? Amen. I wish you would be patient with me, even when I am a little foolish. But you are already patient with me. I am jealous for you with the jealousy that comes from God. I promise to give you to Christ. He must be your only husband. I want to give you to Christ to be his pure bride. But I am afraid that your minds will be led away from your, your true and pure following of Christ. This could happen just as Eve was tricked by the snake with his clever lies. You seem to be quite patient with anyone who comes to you and tells you about Jesus. That is different from the Jesus we told you about. You seem very willing to accept a spirit or a message that is different from a spirit and message that you received from us. This was written by Paul to the Corinthians, my brothers and sisters. And it is also written to warn us that there are false teachers everywhere. That if we are not careful, we will be tricked and be deceived. Just like what, we, just like what the snake did to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Just like, yeah, just like the snake did to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Eden. Around the world, there are a lot of things that the people, that the, the devil is doing. It's like what I said about those crying statues, dancing sun, bleeding heart of statues. We should be very careful not to believe them, believe to this easily, my brothers and sisters. My, my, brother, my brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 24, verse 4 to 5. Jesus said, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive, deceive many. Yeah, just like in the Philippines, we know this one. I always say Philippines because we know that there is one man there saying he is the Messiah. And please do not be deceived by him because he said he walked past through the sun already and came back already from there. So... Do not believe him. He's got a big church in the Philippines. He's deceiving a lot of people from there. And it's scary because still there are a lot of people who deceives them. Uh, there's a lot of people who believes him. So my brothers and sisters, Matthew 24, 23 to 24 said, At the time, if anyone <coughs> says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So, no one is, uh, wala pong, uh, exempted, thank you very much. No one will ex be exempted for the attack of the devil. Amen? Because it says here, Jesus is the one saying this, even the elect, the devil will try to deceive. We need to be very careful and be like the Bereans, my brothers and sisters. You know the Bereans? Acts 17, 11. The Bereans were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. See, it was Paul who was telling them about the good news before already, no? So what even more now 
we don't know the people who are telling, we, we, we don't know about the people who uh, we are listening to. So we need to make sure if what they are saying is true, we have to be like the Bereans, that we need to study the Bible. If we can, do it every day. Amen? Because how many times, as ha, here in the UK, how many times do you eat every day? Physically? Five times? Six times? I thought ten times. <laughs> no. Normal is three times, diba? Right? Including merienda, it's going to be six times or five times. So, our physical body needs food every day, at least three times. So, what can we do to have our spiritual body as well? We need to feed our spiritual body at least how many times? We need to feed every day as well, not only once a week. Most of us feed our spiritual body only once a week. When was that? Only Sunday. Yeah, some of us twice a week, Friday and Sunday. And according to Paul, we need to eat at least every day. Every, every time, di po ba? We need to be talking. When you wake up in the morning, you need to read the Bible before you go to bed. Eat or at lunchtime. The Bereans examined what Paul said, my brothers and sisters. So, so what, sadly, just like I said, a lot of people don't do that. So they have been deceived, especially in the Philippines. They don't want to read anymore. But this is what Jesus said to the Jews who believe him. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus said that, abide in my word. You are my true disciples if you abide by my word. So if you are not abiding in God's word, we are not his disciples. And we don't know the truth. We have been deceived. What does it say? You are not set free. You are not set free because you are believing in lies. You are living in lies. You will be set free if you abide in his word. The truth, my brothers and sisters, is... Sorry. Amen. Hello. Hello. If we Hello. Yes, my brothers and sisters. The truth if we continue to read Matthew twenty four verse four to fourteen. Yes. <clears throat> this is the truth right now. It is, this is what's what happening right now, my brothers and sisters. Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many, which is happening right now. You will hear wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such thing must happen. But at the end, it is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth planes. We heard, we still know, we still having this war right now in Ukraine and Rush, Russia and Israel and Palestinians. And recently we just have this earthquake in the Philippines. And there are famines everywhere because of the drought. And not only that, there's drought in the other side of the world, and there is flood in the other side of the world. So this is happening right now, my brothers and sisters. But according to Jesus, do not be alarmed. Such thing must happen. And the, Ill, the end is still to come. And we know that there are famines around the world. Amen. Then you will, this is, uh, you need to be prepared, my brothers and sisters. 
you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray, betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We'll see, my brothers and sisters. Are you, are you ready or are you prepared to be handed over and to be persecuted to death? This will happen if you read the Bible, you read the Bible really. This will happen and it will come a time that you will be hated by all nations. We are still blessed that this country still don't hate Christians. We know that there are countries who are persecuting Christians already. Soon, it may come that all Christians will be persecuted. At that time, many will turn away from the faith. It's starting now. We know that some Christians who are really very active before, they are turning away their backs to the faith because they're, I don't know, they're turning away and they don't believe in Christ anymore or because of just uh, may mga pagsubok na dumating sa buhay nila, they don't have enough faith to go through, or they don't really understand the meaning of the gospel. Or, this is what the Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ have said before, they were never been saved even before. Some Christians right now, they said they are Christians, but they don't really understand the meaning of gospel, and they are not really been saved. This is what the question of other people before, what are what is going to happen to those Christians who were really active before, be, who were really uh, active but became cold? And at the end, they will, be, they will end up in hell. According to Jesus, they were never been really saved. That's sad, but Jesus said, those who stands firm to the end will be saved. Amen? Amen? So are you going to stand firm with your faith Amen. and your love, to, love, love for Jesus? Amen. 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 So my brothers and sisters, there will be a lot of false prophets. Please don't believe them. Amen. The truth is these signs are happening right now, my brothers and sisters. And just like I said, I hope and pray that all of us are prepared. Jesus also said this in John 14, 6. I am, I am, him. I am the way. <laughs> Hello. Sagot mo, Brother Lester. Bili tayong bagong bukas. Yes, uh, are you, are you prepared to meet the Lord, to meet the Father? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, through him, not me, through him. In Jesus, amen. amen. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Very truly, I tell you, whoever, whoever obeys my word, my word will never see death. Obeys my word, my brothers and sisters. Do you know the truth? Who is the truth? The truth is Jesus. And who will set you free? Disigurado. Who will set you free? Free. Who will set you free? Jesus, and if you abide in his word, you will be called the true disciples of God, the true disciples of Jesus. So what are we going to do? Psalms, the psalmist said, David, this is King David saying, 
I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The psalmist declared that he has stored up God's word in his heart or basically memorized it. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by Satan, Jesus always quoted the scripture to rip up and rebuke the devil. The devil always misquotes scripture, but if someone memorized the word of God in context, they have a storehouse of powerful weapons to defend against temptation and test and carry them through the severe trials and tribulations. Store it up because we know, I know, that we most certainly need it. My brothers and sisters, we need to read and meditate the world so that we will not be deceived by false teachings or false prophets or teachers or by the children of the devil. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, Keep this book of the law always in your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written on it. So my brothers and sisters, kung if you all know what is written in the Bible, you, I'm not sure. I'm sure you don't. You will not be able to memorize it. Some of people I know they are very good uh, in memorizing. I don't. I'm not like that anymore. I'm too old to memorize. <laughs> or some of them I memorize. It's already gone. It's aging. But uh, if you keep on reading, you will still remember the rem remember those uh, Bible verses. And if Trial comes, and if the devil comes, you can rebuke him easily. Amen. 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 Yeah. So, just like uh, Timothy as well, preach the world, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. So, this one, my brothers and sisters, in season and out of season, no? You can be ready if you keep on reading. the. If you always read the Bible, just like what I said, it's not only when the devil comes that you are ready, but when Jesus comes. Are you ready, my brothers and sisters? In season and out of season, that means every time. So when Jesus comes, you are also ready. Amen? If you are not ready when Jesus comes, and he will ask you, what were you doing? What are you doing? And you are sleepy. That means you are, your faith is struggling. You are cold. You are not going to church because you don't feel like it. You're, you're tired. You've just been into six straight working days. And you don't have time to go to church because you'd rather go to sleep. And when Jesus comes, what are you going to tell him? Sorry, God. Sorry, Lord. Pagod ako eh. Paano naman? And what will Jesus said to you? It's judgment time. Sorry, I don't know you anymore. What would you like to hear? Sorry, I don't know you. Or, well done, my good and faithful servant. Which one would you like to hear? The first one or the second one? The second one. Amen. Diba? I remember, I remember, I was deceived once. It's very bad. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I was uh, recruited by a fake agency, and I was supposed to go to Sweden. And yeah, I gave them 40,000 pesos, and uh, I just found out that uh, the next day that they closed because they are fake, so... 40,000 gun, and uh, yeah, it's very bad to be deceived. So it's, it's okay, it's only money, but uh, what happens if you followed someone who deceived you into going to hell? Amen? So you need to be very careful on who you are following. You need to research, you need to read the Bible, you need to pray, you need to meditate so that you will not be deceived. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So my brothers and sisters, if you don't really read the Bible, the word will be very blurred, or you won't be able to know it. So if you keep reading the Bible, the Bible, the world, you will know the word become 
clear. And if you know the word, you will know the truth. And if you know the truth, that the truth is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 So, let's close. Yes, our dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you once again for this wonderful day. Lord, uh, we know it's been a hot day today, Lord God. And, uh, but with your help, Lord Jesus, we can push through. And uh, thank you, Lord God, for your word that we are able to understand. And we know there are still a lot more that we need to understand. We still, there are still more that uh, we need to learn more about you, Lord. And that's our work. That's, we need to do that. We need to read your Bible to get to know you more. And uh, we will know more about you, and we will know the truth, Lord God. And please, Lord, give us this uh, willingness to do all this stuff, willingness to do your will, and willingness, Lord God, to be used by you. We know sometimes we are hard-headed, Lord God, and we just want to go our own way. Sometimes we don't trust you. Sometimes we just go whatever we want to, Lord God. We know that's wrong. Please, Lord, help us to be led by you, Lord God. Take us by our hands. Show us the way. Be our light. Be our guide. And, Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And as we go on through this day, Lord God, we continue to ask for your help and mercy that you will lead us, Lord God. And we know a lot of us are struggling. A lot of us are suffering. A lot of us, Lord God, are going through a lot of heartaches, troubles, deaths of our own family. Please, Lord, give us your comfort and peace. Give us, Lord God, that you are holding us, Lord God. And we know, Lord, sometimes we just forget that you are just there beside us. Help us to realize this, Lord God, that you are always there for us. Help us, Lord God. Give us the comfort that we need. And give us the peace, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's call the music team. All right, thank you, Brother Ramon or Pastor Ramon, for such a eye-opening and such a heavy topic to preach. But, you know, I also believe that it should be preached more often because it's something that is coming soon. So, yes, let's, um, I encourage everyone, us as well, to, you know, to practice discernment, to practice um, looking into the Bible, which is right and which is wrong. So thank you, Pope, brother, uh, Pastor Ramon. So let's just ask everyone to stand up and we'll just close into this second song, please. To this uh, song, victory you know, the, the, our victory song that we all know that everyone that trusts and knows the Lord will prevail in the end. Amen? Amen. Amen. Second song. Play po natin ang presensya ng Panginoon.
us love unrestrained this is our god ever rejoicing praise of glory honor and strength unto our god unto our god your matchless endless love unrestrained this is our god ever Brother Alan, uh, in behalf of uh, Crisis uh, Rock Ministries and uh, brothers, uh, we will give this to you as a counting, uh, counting tulong lang. And uh, some of them are already uh, nag-online na lang, nag-online na para para po sa inyo. Is accept us. Maraming salamat po sa inyo mga kapatid. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Gusto niyo pa? Balik kayo Sunday daw. Let's uh, have another song. I don't know. <laughs> 